Janet Lee was a California girl, went to uh, college in the San Joaquin Valley, uh, became a great movie actress in an unforgettable role in Psycho, and uh, one of the loveliest women I ever knew. Nice to see you, Janet. Good to see you. And congratulations on this. Let me see. Yeah, it's muscle. It's oh, all muscle. Oh, I love it. What you want to feel do? mine? Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, yeah, it's a pimple. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. That's, um, that's, uh... That's a book. I know it's a book. <laughs> it's a real book. Easy to write for you? Uh, it, it was easy to write in terms of, uh, did it flow? And yeah. was it easy to put down? Pain. The, but because I did it in a, in a special way, Murph, I tried very hard to strip down, you know, and I tried to write uh, as it happened at, at the age I was when it happened mm. instead of from today's age and looking back and saying that's how it was. I really got down to the core, to the inner core, and I wrote that from that frame of reference. Right. And so it was hard, uh, easy to do. And it was hard to do yeah. because obviously the the happy times, like walking into the MGM the first time, I mean that I could, I, I mean I got goosebumps because I, I really was there and I was doing it and I was looking and I was in awe and I was, and then when you got to the happy, uh, the unhappy times, then you also, uh, I was vulnerable sure. because in in I I looked at it the way it was then and so that was uh, painful, but. Um, but uh, that's what you had to do if you're going to do it honestly. Sure, absolutely. Y you were really discovered in what most people consider the Hollywood way. I mean, yeah. someone saw a picture of you or someone saw you. It was Norma Shearer. Norma Shearer. Norma Shearer who saw you and brought your picture back to Metro. I, right? That's exactly right. I had gone to visit my mom and dad who were working in Sugar Bowl Ski Lodge, and uh, I had never seen snow, and this was Christmas break, and I went to visit them, and you know they took a picture on this on the slopes with borrowed army jackets and pee, <laughs> pee jackets and anything we could we could get to keep warm because we didn't have any clothes or you know the right clothes. Anyway, and I was on, in the snow, and Daddy took a little picture, and uh, uh, he had it on his little cubicle desk there, and. Um, uh, Norma Shear and Marty Arrogé always went there for a month uh, during ski season, and um, she saw the picture, brought it back with her, to, gave it to Lou Wasserman, uh, who gave it to New Talent, and uh, who sent for me, brought me to MGM, and I signed a contract. That, uh... It was a miracle. Yeah, that is a it miracle, It did happen. It? it really <laughs> did happen. The, See, it really was a Hollywood film. I think there is a copy that we took out of here and disked of that picture that uh, Norma Shearer saw. Hello. Hello. Where? That's it. Is. My, my. Oh, I would have yeah. signed you right on the spot, Janet. Oh. Look at that. I asked, you know, it's funny Great. because, isn't it, that was just, you know, just a little old brownie thing. And um, uh, I asked Miss Shearer uh, later when I had met her, because um, I didn't even know her, you know, and I asked her, why did she do that? I mean, she championed this this stranger. Um, and it was funny, she said, well, there wasn't really, I mean, she had no ulterior motive of trying to either show power or whatever. She said, I, I thought I saw something and I just wanted to see if I was right. And she was so pleased that it turned out the way that it did. But she, you know, because she discovered Bob Evans too. Right, I know she did. Yeah. She put yeah. him in to play her husband who was head of Metro at one uh, time. Irving Thalberg, right. Irving Thalberg, right. right. And then yeah. also he did a, a Matador. Matador or, film, yeah, sure. Yeah. That Hollywood is gone? Well, that Hollywood is gone, yes. I mean, you know, uh, yesterday is yesterday and today is today. Yeah, but I, lay it on the line, Janet. It really was more exciting then. It was absolutely different. Thrilling. Uh, it was. Uh, and I don't mean that there isn't one today. Um, I really wanted to to substantiate the fact that it also was the way most people think that it is even now. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 um, I think that when people arrive in Hollywood today, um, visitors, you know, they expect to see the Hollywood that's in their mind 
you know, the image that they, and it's not, it's mm -hmm. just not the same. Um, and I, it's not said in sadness, uh, no, uh, because I'm not one to, to, to resent change. I mean, I, but I'm also not one to negate what was just because there is change. Right. And I just wanted to say, and to, to, to substantiate, you know, to, to reaffirm those maybe who had begun to doubt that there really was a Hollywood. Sometimes you to really say, want to. You know, those yeah. miracles happen and, and it, it was wonderful and it was exciting and, and not that it isn't today and life yeah. isn't, but, but don't forget what was too. Sometimes on the show when I'm doing interviews about today, sometimes I want to just say, but you have no idea what it was like. It was, to me, thrilling. I mean, there were central places where everybody kind of gathered, and it was fun. The tourists had fun with it. They were taking pictures, and there was Ciro's and Mocambo and Trocadero. Oh, yeah, yeah. And places to go to, and then the Coconut Grove. Sure. I was there with sure. Freddie through those years that were, I mean, thrilling. It was just... Oh, Absolutely. And there was glamour and excitement, and there were stars. There were really, really stars, yeah, you know? Right. And when the young stars, I can remember visiting Janet at her home at the time she was married to Tony Curtis, and I mean, that was so thrilling. The two of you were so hot in those days, and it was mobs fun. of people trying to get to you. And then I remember the time in New York where you had the big press showing of Houdini and yeah. all the excitement that surrounded that. You know, the thing I'll never forget, uh, that was, it just stands out as how, how taken the, the people were. It was so dear and sweet that we got off the train in Boston. Uh, I, think, I think we were there. Tony was going to make six bridges to cross in Boston. And um, there were hundreds of people. And this sweet little girl came up and she said, Now, when are we going to have our baby? Oh, gee. Yeah, and I thought, well, gee, I didn't know. I, you know, you haven't asked me. Uh, but um, we it was, yeah, baby? I mean, it was like, it was there. It would have been there. It was there, sure. baby. You know, it was really fun. And what a baby they you were, had. Two, two oh, beautiful, wonderful children. Wonderful. Yeah. Your daughter, Jamie Lee, is having a wonderful career, isn't, isn't she? That an nice? exciting career. Yes, yes, I'm very happy for her. Really. Do you talk to her about it? Uh, I mean, do you advise her? I or? talk to her constantly. But oh, about well. With advice, listen, I think I call her for advice. You know, <laughs> she's very strong. Isn't she's she? very positive. It, it very, she she has a great deal of sense about um, about the business and about her, um, more so than I actually. I'm a little even. I think more naive in terms of of the business part of it, because when I started, I was so. Green. I mean, I was just such a novice. I, did, I mean, you know, plucked from a hayfield, so to speak, not literally, but, you know, and then put in this, in this magic wonderland. And, uh, and I always, I mean, uh, the studio took care of that, and the agent took care of that, because I, you know, I didn't know how to take care of that. But with Jamie, when Jamie started, uh, there were, the, uh, you didn't have a parent, um, surrogate parent, uh, in terms of a studio right. uh, contract system. You made your so own decisions. It was, you, you're forced to. You, I mean, you, you have to do your own, take your own lessons, find the teacher to, to take the lessons from. And so it's an entirely different concept. Yeah. And so, and she was also brought up in the business, uh, it, at least exposed to it. So her frame of reference uh, was, had much more knowledge in that in that circle than mine did. Great know? bodies must run in your family. Huh? <laughs> Mama. Now, Jamie Lee, my, my, come on. Photos from the book, if we may, Janet. Comment on it. Oh, that's, that's on the set of Romance of Rosie Ridge, which was the first picture I ever did. You have curls. And, well, that was the period. It was, you know, 1860. <laughs> Esther and, Williams and, and Esther Williams came to visit on the set, and that's Van Johnson, of course, who's right. the dearest, sweetest man in the whole world. And um, uh, that picture was like, well, it, it was, uh, it, that, it, that picture had an aura of, of uh, an enchanted company because I was the first picture, and it was sure. my first picture, and everybody was pulling from me, and they were so wonderful and sweet. Next. That's on Words and Music. Oh, uh, Mickey Rooney. Uh, Mickey Rooney. Uh, it was the story of Lorenz Hart and uh, Richard Ro Rogers. Richard Rogers, sure. And I played Mrs. Rogers. And um, uh, The Mighty Might was uh, 
was uh, uh, Larry Hart, yep. and that was on the set. Great film, great stars. Yes, oh, wonderful, music. wonderful musical numbers. Next. Oh, there he is, there the he king is. of Hollywood. Yes, I, I was. Um, he came to visit on the set that day. That was I was doing a picture called Hills of Home, and uh, Mr. Gable came uh, on the set. Look at the look he's giving you. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You look very tentative, Jane. <laughs> well, I, I think I was just in such awe of, of <laughs> seeing him. Everybody was in awe of The fact that he guy. came on the set to visit me, you yeah, know. Yeah. And yeah. isn't he beautiful? Yeah, he was a handsome fellow. There he is. Look, look at that robe. Errol Flynn. Yeah. My, my. That was on the set of um, That Forsyth Woman. Yeah. With um, like Greer Garson, Errol Flynn. And look at the look he's Walt giving you. What is going on yeah. in all these pictures? Gee whiz. <laughs> what have I missed? <laughs> <laughs> you weren't um, looking. Walter Pigeon, Robert Young, yeah. and um, I think he had a sort of a boo-boo there. There's I, lust I was, in those eyes. <laughs> he was, he was, I dashing. He, he was. Yeah. He was absolutely so charming. I mean, he was just as beautiful. The first time I really gasped. I, I, just, I just kind of went. <gasps> Uh, when I when I first met him, it was it was. Uh... I first knew him in those days and played tennis with him at the old Beverly Wilshire Hotel. Really? Yeah, when they had tennis courts. Yeah. There's another there one. He Look is at that. My is that a, is that a charmer? There that's on there. this. That's on the set of Holiday Affair. Uh, that I, a picture I made at RKO with Robert Mitchum, and uh, Cary Grant came to visit on the set, and um, that's a, that's from my treasure box. My treasure box of photos, yeah. for sure. The King. Well, that's... Tony Perkins. It's Tony that Perkins. It had to be the opening night of Psycho. Uh, well, it was very... Yes, it, and, and it was um, our happier times together. <laughs> As opposed to... Before the shower. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, uh, um, yes, it was right about the time of the Gee. opening of Psycho. Yeah. That was... Um, that's me in the black wig. Yeah. That's Bye Bye, Bye, Bye Birdie. Birdie. And Dick playing, Van Dyke. And Dick Van Dyke playing Rosie. Um, you know, Cheetah Rivera still should have played that part. <laughs> Don't say that. No, no. She was, she, she. <laughs> and there you she, are. She Jamie just, and Kelly. Jamie's on the left. Yep. Kelly's on the right. Uh, that was on the set of, um, I think that was on the set of Three on a Couch. Mm. And, um, you know, they came to visit Mommy on the set. Right. Look how happy Jamie looks. Right. <laughs> Good book. Janet Lee's. There really was a Hollywood. Thank you, Tom. Oh, it's lovely to see you.